And action. Hey dudes, like totally awesome day. I'm like so glad I don't have to wait for the bus alone. My name's Kelly, California. Like who are you two? Nice to meet you. My name is Penn, Pennsylvania. You know, the Quaker state? <laughs> who is your rat little friend and why is he cracking up? Well, that's kind of a long story. Awesome! I have like an hour until my bus comes! Well, here's the thing. His name is Liberty Bell and he's been cracking up since 1752. That's a really long time. See, he's made out of like 70% copper and 25% tin and some other metals like lead, zinc, arsenic, gold, and silver. I know he doesn't look this heavy, but he weighs about 2,080 pounds. He lost some weight over the years because his private watchmen would chip pieces off of him as souvenirs. <gasps> How like totally awful! Oh, don't worry. They put Liberty back in a glass case and then ended up putting Liberty back in the Tower of Independence Hall and a guard was posted there to keep him safe. Awesome! But back to the cracking up. He actually began cracking up right after he arrived in Philadelphia in August 1752. He was made in London by the bell founding firm of Lester and Peck and seemed fine when he arrived. However, the first time they tried to ring him, he cracked at the rim. He was quickly taken to two local founders named John Pass and John Stowe. They were pretty new at this bell making thing. Old Liberty here was melted down and made into a brand new bell. Sadly, even in his new form, he could not produce the beautiful sound that was expected. Ding! So Pass and Stowe did a little more work on him. But get this, he started to crack. Again? Again. Like why? I thought they fixed him. No one knows for sure, but they think it wasn't the right mix of metals. Bummer! Totally. So anyway, the crack grew enough that they had to stop ringing him. Aww. Totally. But my friend here did some pretty amazing things. He was used to summon the assembly. Benjamin Franklin even talks about my pal in one of his letters. And when George III became king back in England, guess who was wrong? They used to ring him to summon people to worship and for public meetings. He was part of Abraham Lincoln's funeral services in 1865. Abraham Lincoln! And when Congress had a peacetime draft in 1940, Philadelphians took their oath before the Liberty Bell. What about the 4th of July? Woohoo! Actually, a lot of people think that he was rung at the signing of the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776. He probably was not rung on that actual day, but he probably was one of many bells that rung on July 8th, 1776, when the Declaration of Independence was read. The reason so many people connect the Liberty Bell with the signing of Declaration of Independence is because of a story written by George Lepard in 1847. It's called The Story of the Fourth of July. He said that an old bell ringer said on July 4, 1776, morosely fearing that Congress would not have the courage to declare independence. Then, at the most dramatic moment, a young boy appears with directions to ring the bell. The story was widely reprinted and connected the Liberty Bell and the Declaration of Independence in people's minds. Don't believe everything you read. Totally. However, some people say it was first termed the Liberty Bell in the New York Anti-Slavery Journal in 1835. A great read. My friend Liberty here has been to many places, experienced many things, and met many historic people. He doesn't travel anymore because of the whole cracking up thing. He just hangs out in his hometown of Philadelphia. Speaking of Philadelphia, here comes our bus. We're off to see our good friend, Re Betsy Ross. The Betsy Ross! How totally awesome! Uh -oh.